Hello! In this video, I want to do a breakdown of this Canon C70 setup that we built for broadcast, live stream, and event. What I'm going to do is I am going to tear down everything and I'm going to put them back together and I will explain to you why we chose the equipment that we chose. So now that I have a fairly bare bone set up here, everything that was mounted to the camera is right here. And I'm going to explain to you why I chose to have them. And here I have the Canon C70. I have the uh, Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter rehoused by Cinematics. This is the small rig cage for C70. Now, if I had to redo this again, I would definitely get a cage that will go all around. I can't mount much stuff on this side because the cage that I chose is only this side. I chose it because I thought it would be lighter and it was cheaper, but turns out I definitely need to have a cage that goes around. The bottom, the, the rail mount is also from small rig. I am not particularly uh, loyal to any brand of any kind. I do my research, I find gear, and then I buy based on function. So on the camera, I have the adapter here. This is basically the um, RF mount to EF mount. I usually use the uh, one that has a speed booster on it because once you put a speed booster on this, it will give you one stop of light. And what we use these cameras often are in environments that are fairly dark and shows and, 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 and events and, and worship. So extra light is always a good thing. So this is the lens that I have here for this particular build, but we do change the lens that we use on this based on the events. So for example, if we need reach, we would opt for a different lens. One of the lens that we popularly use on this setup is the servo lens 70 to 200 from Canon. It's servo zoom and servo focus. The only reason why I'm not a huge fan of this lens, despite the fact that it is an excellent, probably one of the best lenses from Canon, is that it is a T4.4. That is about F4 lens. It's constant aperture, but that's not very fast. This is T2. This is T4.4. And that's the reason why we don't use this that often. But when we need a little bit more reach in, um, in events, for example, larger stage, or uh, we need to be a little bit further back, then I often opt to use this. This is a manual lens. This is all autofocus, servo lens, servo zoom, servo focus. So the way we build the things is a little bit different when we use this lens. But when we use photo lenses, when we use cinema lenses, then this is the build that we have. So I'm going to attach the lens to the camera. It's very front heavy once you attach it. And I am going to attach the rods for it. These are your standard small rig 15 millimeter rods. Any 15 millimeter rod will do the job. I chose to have a base plate that has these two screws that hold the rail because although a C70 on its own is not very heavy, once you build it up to a rig like this, it is not a very, very light setup. So here I have the rods. I'm going to attach the handle. So this is also a small rig handle. The reason why we have this whole metal handle is because this camera is actually often, if not always, used with an easy rig. Now we don't have an easy rig, we have a knockoff brand, but it does the same job. So basically from this, the camera is lifted with an easy rig system so that the, the whole body of the operator basically can um, distribute the weight. So that's why we have this handle. If we, if we were to use this for filming, recording stuff, the camera is almost already complete. You probably have to add a little bit of focus demand and some of that, then you're done. But the thing about broadcast is that you need a reliable way of transmitting the image for live streaming, for iMag, for monitoring, for all of those kind of stuff. 
And for that, we use a Teradek Bolt 6 that is housed in this uh, V-mount housing by wooden camera. So basically inside is just a regular uh, Teradek Bolt 6. Uh, this is the 4K Bolt with the SDI. They're very expensive and they're definitely much cheaper options out there like the Holy Land. Most of the time, Holy Land are just as good as Teradek in most case scenarios, especially if it in if it if it is used for let's say focus pooling and stuff like that. We go with Teradek one because the the latency on them is almost non-existent, but also they usually handle themselves in live event very very well because. What happens is we film events and there are so, so many wireless setup um, from audio stuff like microphones and so many things. Teradek is great with interference. And that's the reason why we choose to go with Teradek Bolt 6. We got this uh, casing for it. And the reason why we got the casing is because we use this transmitter on a bunch of other systems. We use them on broadcast G2s. We use them on other cameras that we rent. And what the case is for basically is that it allows you to mount the Bolt 6 at the back with V-mount like this. And then you can have battery behind it. And this is basically the, com the kind of setup that you often see on very, very, very expensive broadcast setup where everything just lines up in the back. And that's basically where we went with this. You could probably attach the transmitter somewhere, find a little arm in cinema setup. That probably is a good idea because it's a controlled environment. In broadcast, we choose to have something that is reliable and that is not on the way so that it's a lot easier to operate the system. So this goes in here. So the camera is powered with the V-mount. So I have the cable here, plugs into the camera, and then I usually rotate them around so that I don't have loose, loose, loose cable. So this guy often plugs in the back here or on the top here, it doesn't really matter. We just try to make sure that it is tidy, no cable, you know, going all over the place. So now the pack, the camera is powered. The Bolt 6 also needs to be powered. So the Bolt 6 comes with this DTAP adapter as well. So you plug the transmitter and find a DTAP source here. I think I prefer this guy here. There we go. That's done. So now the transmitter is also powered. And from there, we are going to attach the monitor. Now, right now I have this old, this is like the original, the OG Blackmagic monitor. And the monitor is attached to the handle here with the small rig monitor adapter here. So basically this guy screws in very, very secure. I really, really like this little adapter. I have bought cheaper adapter in the past, the ones that goes like a hot shoe here, and it's just so flimsy. This guy does not go anywhere. Now, this monitor also serve as a relay between the camera and the transmitter. So I have two HDMI cables. The HDMI goes from the camera to the monitor input. And from the monitor output, it goes to the transmitter right here. And basically, image goes to the monitor, monitor sends it to the transmitter, transmitter sends it to the monitor that you choose to have uh, sometimes uh, cause a little bit of a delay. So you need to choose a monitor that will prevent you from having more delay than you need because in live event delay is a problem especially if you have it on iMag and like the person who speaks raise their hand and it's only after that the image raised their hand you don't want that and i power the monitor with dtap as well so this guy here goes in 
when I bought this cable from Blue Condor, I told myself, oh, a little bit of color would be great. But now I really hate it because I cannot unsee it. So that takes care of the transmission. The last thing that I'm going to add is the focus demand and zoom demand. Now that applies to a photo lens and manual cine lens like this. When I use this one, I don't need to add any of that. And what I have is the small rig magic fizz. So these are basically just your regular focus puller. But when you buy the combo, then you get a focus and zoom. Uh, and I really, really like basically how these two work together. You can actually attach them on top of each other. Now, this setup deserves its own video. But basically, if I put them together like this, I have zoom down here and then I have focus up here. But that's not what I prefer. One of the guys that we work with here prefers this way. I actually prefer them to be separate. One hand does focus and the other hand does the zoom. So I usually prefer the zoom on the left. So basically they come with this NATO rail mount and the cage has NATO rail in it. And I attach this like this. So basically, not only it serves as a handle, but it also serves as my zoom demand right here. So I can actually zoom very, very well. And the focus goes to this side. Now, this is why I said earlier that I wish I had a full rig of cage here, but I don't. This setup came with this low NATO rail mount for uh, for a rail that you can attach the motors on. But what I use them for now is I attach it to the side of the C70. Now, this is definitely a temporary fix, but temporary fix that we have used for a while because it works. It's not perfect. It just works. So I haven't really bothered to try something else. But the only problem with it is sometimes it comes a little bit loose. So it attaches there. And the focus demand with its NATO rail mount basically just slides in. I usually tighten them a little bit harder than this. But right now it's just for demonstration. There you go. So basically, with this setup on an easy rig, the operator basically has it floating. So they control the camera's motion and pitch with this hand, with this mount, while this other hand basically doesn't really need to do much. So it just pulls the focus. Now I'm going to attach the motors. So one of them is zoom, one of them is focus. And that is the setup that we use for C70 for broadcast and live event. One thing that I don't like about the current setup is that once these focus motors are attached, the camera cannot stand straight anymore. So I need to find something, a plate. Often it's not really a problem because it's often attached on a person on an easy rig. But you know, when you want to have the camera lay down, then these things kind of stick out a little bit. There are a few things that I could go about it. I could try to find a way to mount the rail from the top so that the motor is basically face down, or I just need to find a way to have something more uh, to add heights and stability in the bottom. Although the main cameras that we use in a broadcast environment are broadcast cameras with broadcast lenses before lenses, we actually like to have this roaming in the room. So often they would have an easy rig go around the musicians so that they can film their keyboards, their hand, the drummer. So basically what it does, is it adds a little bit of flair, a little bit of style to broadcast events like concert and worship to something otherwise very static. So we like to add a little bit of motion, a little bit of movement. So this basically complements your regular setup with broadcast cameras. 
as a roaming camera, side camera, audience camera, walking around a little bit. And that's basically what we use this setup for. So that's it for this video. If you have any question, please feel free to put them in the comment and I will do my best to reply to each one of them. And also, if you find this video useful or at least entertaining, feel free to like and subscribe as that helps. We're still in the very, very early stage of YouTube, but uh, I really hope that uh, with the community and with your support, we can grow together. And uh, until next time, bye.